All right, so we just got it out on the water. Uh, as you can see, a little bit more bundled up than usual. Beautiful fall day. Uh, we're just kind of reaching the fall months and what happens up here in the north country is smallmouths tend to congregate towards their deep wintering holes, deep rock, that sort of deal. And bait is the name of the game. So we're gonna go out on this lake today and try to do just that. Find some schools of smallmouths out a little bit deeper um, and try to intercept them before they uh, kind of get into winter mode. So they should be chewing. Uh, typically when you get a nice fall day like this, they're happy to eat. So we'll see what happens today, but it should be fun. There we go. Hooked up. Hit spot lock here. What do we got? Oh, little small mouth. Little small mouth. As you can tell, <laughs> throwing the chandelier today. Not a big one, but it's a start. So we just pulled up. We got two islands on either side of us here. And uh, we just idled around a little bit, found where some shelf rock kind of dipped down into what I would consider a basin for this lake. It's a little bit deeper water, probably where these fish are gonna end up wintering. And what they're doing, there's a bunch of bait around and stuff that we've been seeing, but they're kind of, what I would guess is they're pinning bait, Cisco tulipy, that sort of deal, up against this slate rock um, and kind of ambushing them. And so that's kind of what we're trying to imitate today is bait fish and a A rig, Minnesota rig, whatever you want to call it. That's what it does it imitates bait fish and so what i'm doing is i'm just sinking this guy down watching it the entire time on mega live you can see it's going down right there fishing in 20 feet or so and i'm just crawling this thing along the bottom you can see keeping that thing right above the rocks at all times and these things it's been cold out so these things are kind of glued to the bottom more so i'm not seeing them 100% of the time there's a there we go that might be a bigger one hit spot lock oh. a little bit chunkier one <laughs> uh, that is where you want them right there and I that one came pretty much straight below the boat <laughs> it was my a rig was about uh, 10 20 feet out in front of the boat and that's uh that's just one nice thing about watching it at all times is you're not raising your bait up off the bottom that's super super important is being able to watch your bait at all times if i didn't see where my bait was i probably would have been lifting it up off the bottom typically that's that's pretty typical on normal casts where you're not seeing your bait it's going to slowly come up off the bottom back towards the boat but i was able to keep it down in the strike zone and Got that guy right below the boat. All right, so for those of you who don't know, you might be saying, what in the world is this guy that I'm throwing? This is actually a Minnesota rig. Uh, it's just got one hook. We can only throw one hook in Minnesota. Uh, typically on most umbrella rigs, Alabama rig, uh, whatever you want to call it, these would all have hooks on them, uh, swim baits with hooks. Uh, this Minnesota rig uh, is replaced by blades. Um, so. It's pretty much just a big profile, it's supposed to imitate, you know, a ball of bait, that sort of deal. Looks super, super cool in the water. Lots of flash, uh, lots of vibration down there. It, it imitates a lot of different bait fish. And then on this particular Minnesota rig, a little bit longer wire in the back uh, to a single swim bait. This is a uh, Largo shad. And then I just have that paired on a VMC flat shad jig heads so you can mess around with a lot of different heads and swim baits but i really like this one just because it's super durable um, that's one thing that's really important to me is durability i'm going through uh, a lot of different fish on one bait uh, and i'm not having to replace uh, baits they're getting torn up that sort of deal i can catch a lot of fish on this bait which is really important to me this thing has plenty of action but action's not the most important thing to me. I want it to hold up against uh, multiple fish. There we go. Just crawling it. 
Just crawling it right over the rocks. You know, as far as rod reel line goes, um, super important, at least for me. Uh, I've spent a lot of time messing around with it, uh, you know, with this particular setup, umbrella rig fishing. And I would consider this kind of finesse umbrella rig fishing, uh, smallmouth that is, and one single hook. Once you start adding a bunch of swim baits to this, it gets pretty heavy, and that's where, you know, you see your guys using big, big setups, like seven, nine, eight foot rods. Um, but for this, uh, this just has one single jig head and a swim bait, and so it's actually quite a bit lighter than your typical umbrella rig. So for this, I'm using a 7.4 medium heavy, and it's a regular action. That's super important. You can see there's a lot of bend in that rod. Super important because you want this thing to load up. It's really easy to pull this thing away from the small mouth, and so I want that rod to load up, and I'm just kind of I'll jack them a little bit, but it's more of a reel and then set into them. So really, really important. I'm fishing on 17 pound fluorocarbon. Again, most guys you see using braid, 40 pound braid or 20 pound fluorocarbon. This is 17. I just feel like that lets me get this thing down uh, a lot quicker. Since I only have one jig head on it, that's really important to me. It lets me stay in contact with the bottom or at least down in the strike zone. So the reel is equally as important. You want a slower gear ratio reel just to be able to, again, slow that bait down. I'm fishing this thing anywhere from 15 to 30 feet of water at times. So being able to slow down with a slower gear ratio reel is really important as well as something that you can put a whole bunch of line on uh, as far as castability goes that is going to allow you to make the furthest cast possible. And so that's just something that I've, I've messed around with it a lot uh, and this is what I have found to be the best for me. So we just moved spots uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit spot lock here, but same sort of deal. We're off of a rocky point. It dips down into some deeper water. There's another basin out here, similar to that last spot. And there's a couple big isolated rocks off the tip of this. And we just eased up on to these rocks and I'm gonna shine target lock over to them. There's a couple big, big rocks and there's actually some fish hanging off of them. So we can see See if I can find one here. You can see on both 360, here's big rock number one, here's big rock number two, here's big rock number one, here's big rock number two. Pretty cool, you can just reassure yourself. 360 pulled up here, here's your point. Deep water, mud, basin. You come up here and look, and it's exactly what you see down here. Pretty sweet, I find a lot of you know, my high percentage spots looking at 360 and I shine my live imaging over to it and then make a cast. It's pretty cool. You don't obviously need to run both, but having both on your boat definitely maximizes, uh, you know, your percentage of catching as many fish as possible. Here's a fish. Look at that guy. He moved right off the rock. These things are so tight to the rocks. These rocks hold a lot of heat. So these fish are sitting real tight to him, but that guy just came up off bottom. I'm gonna try to cast to him and catch him. So there's my bait coming at him, coming at him, coming at him. I'm gonna get it above him. Oh, he just reacted to it. Oh, he, oh, see, I got him. I didn't see that fish. I didn't see that fish, he was so tight to the rock and that one reacted to it and all of a sudden more came up off the rock. So you almost have to, you have to make casts at high percentage areas. You're not always going to see the fish on live imaging. But if you see stuff that looks good, especially when you get into this time of year where these fish are sitting tight to bottom, go ahead and make a cast and you'll see within one cast if there's a fish there or not. So pretty cool. Might need the players on this guy, but nice northern smallmouth. There we go. Four inch Largo shad. Perfect, perfect bait imitating bait. <laughs> cool. 
There's my bait going down. You can see this fish up on top of the rock. I'm gonna bring it just a hair towards him. Let it drop. Let it drop, let it drop. Okay, we're about in line with the fish. I'm gonna keep this right above them. I'm moving, both moving a little bit. Look at them following it. Two of them. Oh! Oh! These things are gonna eat. It's important to stay off the fish, and that's what's obviously nice about forward-facing sonar is I can keep the boat away from these fish, and especially target lock. We have a little bit of wind today. And so what I'm going to do is, these fish aren't leaving the rock, so I'm going to go ahead and hit target lock. And now exit out of that. My transducer is always going to be pointed at this. Yeah, there's going to be a little play in spot lock. The boat's going to kind of move back and forth as it's playing in the wind. But what's not going to move back and forth is my transducer. That's super, super important. I'm always going to be able to see this rock. And as these fish come up and down and use this rock, I'm going to be able to see them at all times. You can see that one's flickering in and out there. So I'm going to be able to make repeated casts and never have to really touch a thing. Here he comes. Come on, baby. There we go. There we go. That's a big one. That's a big one. That was so cool. These fish are stacked on this rock. I pan make a lot. Yeah, that's a big one. Pan make a live over to it. <laughs> oh, that's a really big one. Hit spot lock. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to boat flip this one, Kyle. Go down for this guy. Come here. Come here. What a fiasco here. That is a big, big northern smallmouth. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Watching them eat live time. It does not get much better than that. I'm gonna go over here so Kyle can see it. That is a pretty, pretty small mouth. Look how dark he is. Dirtier water. These things get red. Gosh, that's so fun. These things are putting on the feed bag. This is definitely one of the best techniques to catch these guys. And when you can see it live time, it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> oh, man. See you, big girl.